everyone and welcome to the launch of the UNSW Journal Issue 36-2 with its thematic component on the use of force in international law. My name is Emily Burke and I am the Executive Editor of the UNSW Law Journal. It is a great pleasure to see you all here this evening and in particular I would like to extend a warm welcome to Professor James Crawford, Tim Frost and partners and solicitors of Allens, the Dean of UNSW Law, Professor David Dixon and the Board of the UNSW Law Journal and its alumni. I would like to start by acknowledging the traditional custodians of the land on which we meet, the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation, and pay respects to our elders, both past and present. At the UNSW Law Journal, we pride ourselves on being a leading academic journal that is entirely student-run and produces three issues every year with both a general component and a thematic component on an issue of contemporary relevance. Tonight's thematic issue on the international use of force doctrine brings together an excellent group of articles that make a significant contribution to the literature on topics all the more important to discuss given the ongoing crisis in Syria. In addition to launching this issue tonight, we also celebrate the other successes of the journal and recent reforms we have implemented to our publication structure. Just hours ago, we met to elect our new 2014 Executive Committee and our first ever Digital Editor, which is a new position that we added through a constitutional amendment earlier this year. Our new Digital Editor will be tasked with maintaining our online UNSW Student Legal Research Series, our online social media pages, investigating the establishment of an online comment section on our website and other initiatives. It is both exciting and a great comfort to know that there is such a capable team already eager to begin work for next year. In accomplishing all that we do, the journal relies on the very generous support and commitment of a number of people. On behalf of the editorial board, I would like to express my gratitude to our host this evening, Allens. Allens has been our sponsors for over 35 years now and we are honoured to have such dedicated hosts. In particular, I would like to thank Tim Frost for welcoming us here this evening and Amy Spira for her work in organising this event. The UNSW Law Journal would, is also grateful to our other premier sponsors, Herbert Smith Freehills and King of Wood Mallisons. As a student journal, we are also deeply grateful for the leadership and support of our Dean, Professor David Dixon, and our faculty advisors, Associate Professor Michael Handler and Dr. Liriot Bennett-Moses for their invaluable advice and support. Finally, our journal is its members, the editorial board who painstakingly edited every article in this issue that we are launching tonight several times. It is a privilege to work with such an exceptional group of dedicated editors and friends. But truly, the person who deserves to feel proudest tonight is Guy Baldwin, the editor of this issue. This is the fourth year that Guy has been on the journal and he has worked tirelessly over the past eight months to bring both components of this issue to completion. Unfortunately, Guy can't rest too easy tonight as he was recently elected to the 2014 executive editor for next year. Congratulations, Guy, on a remarkable job and all the best for next year. And with that, I would like to introduce Tim Frost, partner at Allens. Tim graduated UNSW in 1991 and has been a partner at Allens since 2001, specialising in all aspects of workplace relations law. Thanks, Emily, and thanks everyone for coming in tonight. I'm really pleased to be able to um, welcome you to Allens this evening for the launch of issue 36.2 of the UNSW Law Journal. I'm particularly pleased to be able to play this role because after graduating from UNSW with my commerce and law degrees back in 1991, I've this year gone back to school and started um, a new course, the MBA at um, the AGSM. Um, at my current rate of progress, I might get an MBA sometime in 2018 or 2019, but uh, I'm doing the best I can. I must say I'd forgotten that sick in the gut feeling that you get when you sit down on a chair in an exam hall and somebody says to you, you've got 15 minutes to read the paper and three hours to demonstrate that you know what you're talking about in this subject area. Our relationship here at Allens with the university is really important to us. Many of us have studied at the university and many of the people who come here have done their training uh, at UNSW. We're in the process right now of recruiting next year's intake of summer clerks, a process that I'm happy to be a part of, and, our principal, and which is our principal recruitment exercise for the year. And I'm pleased to report that there are many UNSW students participating in that process, and the number and calibre of the UNSW candidates is fantastic. Um, it's fantastic to see a good turnout for this launch this evening. As usual, the Law Journal doesn't disappoint uh, with a range of topics uh, as diverse as something that I'm quite comfortable with, uh, a review of equal pay under the Fair Work Act by Fiona MacDonald and Sarah Charlesworth, 
um, and then extending to a range of issues uh, in the theme of the use of force in international law. Um, the scale of the issues addressed really is enormous. Topics including the responsibility to protect, piercing the shield of sovereignty, the provision of arms and non-lethal assistance to government and opposition forces, and what sounds to me to be the fantastically named article by James Fry, and I'll read it, I won't ever remember it, the XM25 Individual Semi-Automatic Airburst Weapons System and International Law. <laughs> <laughs> I'll admit that some areas of law sound a little bit dry, but that one sounds like it's got that little extra something. So it's really great to be associated with the launch of the journal. Um, enough from me. Please let me extend to you a very warm welcome here to Alan this evening and hand over to Guy Baldwin to introduce the 36-2 uh, edition. Thank you, Tim. Um, ladies and gentlemen and distinguished guests, as issue editor, it is my pleasure to welcome you to the launch of issue 36.2 of the UNSW Law Journal. As Emily has said, this issue, like every issue of the journal, comprises two equally important parts. A thematic component with contributions that focus on an area of law of major contemporary importance, and a general component containing cutting edge legal scholarship on a variety of topics. This issue's thematic is on the use of force in international law. Force in this legal context refers to military action. The topic therefore addresses the contemporary legal status of states recourse to force almost 70 years after the UN Charter prohibited such action except in cases of self-defense or UN Security Council authorization. The international environment has of course changed dramatically since the Charter was enacted. The risk of conventional war between major powers has receded and in its stead we've seen the rise of terrorism, insurgency and the concept of humanitarian intervention. These are issues that have been brought to the fore in the ongoing debate over the uh, legitimacy of a possible Western military response to the crisis in Syria. Our very distinguished keynote speaker, Professor James Crawford, whom I will introduce shortly, will speak further to the thematic topic. The thematic issue of 36.2 is complemented by our general issue, which contains seven significant contributions to Australian legal scholarship. Ms. Zoe Rathis of Griffith University explores recent amendments to the Family Law Act that have redefined family violence in potentially narrow terms. Uniquely, she critiques this new definition by reference to research in the social sciences that legal practitioners may use to interpret it. Professor Wendy Larcombe of the University of Melbourne and Dr. Catherine Feathers uh, report on a landmark survey of uh, law students at the University of Melbourne on the factors associated with law student depression. The results are certain to provide critical insights to providers of legal education. Mr. Charles Noonan, a law graduate at King and Wood Mallisons, studies the use of no invalidity clauses that purport to place government decisions beyond review by the courts. He assesses their compatibility with Section 75.5 of the Constitution in the light of their serious potential to undermine the rule of law. Professor Fiona Burns of the University of Sydney addresses the current state of intestacy law. She compares proposals for reform between several Australian jurisdictions in England, particularly examining whether the law unduly favours the spouse rather than the children of the deceased. Professors Andrew Lynch and George Williams at the University of New South Wales contribute the latest instalments in their well-known yearly series on constitutional law statistics. This year, they examine the patterns of judicial decision-making evident in the 2012 High Court term. Dr. Julia Quilter and Professor Luke McNamara of the University of Wollongong examine the crimes of offensive conduct and offensive language under the Summary Offences Act. Despite very frequent prosecution in local courts, these offences remain troublingly undefined in New South Wales case law. Finally, Ms. Fiona MacDonald and Professor Sarah Charlesworth of the University of South Australia examine the ever important issue of gender pay equality. They focus on the reforms introduced in the Fair Work Act and their recent application by Fair Work Australia. As this list I've just provided might suggest, a project of this kind draws on the work of a large number of individuals. I would now like to acknowledge some of these individuals. 
Uh, as Emily has said, the editorial board of the UNSW Law Journal comprises 27 enormously hardworking uh, people, most of whom are here today, and they've put enormous effort into meticulously editing each article, as Emily said, four times, uh, which is uh, quite a lot of work. I, I probably don't need to say that, but I think that comes across. Uh, my colleagues on the executive committee uh, have provided really remarkable support and, and consistent wisdom. I have to thank in particular Emily Burke, who's done an outstanding job this year. Uh, the anonymous peer reviewers, although by definition I can't name them, uh, the rigorous academic assessment of the articles submitted to the journal uh, is the basis on which we're able to choose outstanding ones to publish. Allen's for its ongoing generous support of the journal and its hosting of this launch event. Uh, Dr. Lucas Litsinski and Dr. Chris Michelson from the UNSW Law Faculty who put up with my initially very ignorant questions about the use of force topic that I had in mind and gradually turned them into more and more reasonable sounding ones. Um, and I lastly acknowledge Professor David Dixon, the Dean of the UNSW Law School for his greatly valued support and encouragement of the journal over the years. Uh, we're also very thankful and fortunate to have with us today Professor James Crawford, uh, who is our keynote speaker and the author of the foreword for the thematic component. Professor Crawford is the Hewell Professor of International Law at the University of Cambridge and Research Professor of Law at La Trobe University. Among a number of distinguished appointments, Professor Crawford was the first Australian member of the United Nations International Law Commission. Uh, there he was responsible for the ILC's work on the International Criminal Court and the second reading of the ILC's Articles on State Responsibility, a very famous uh, work. He has also served as the Dean of the Faculty of Law at the University of Sydney and twice as the Director of the Lauda Pact Centre of International Law at the University of Cambridge. In addition to his renowned scholarship on statehood, collective rights, investment law and international responsibility, Professor Crawford has had a remarkable professional career. He has been engaged as counsel in 23 cases before the International Court of Justice. He has also appeared before a wide range of other international courts and tribunals, including the International Tribunal for the Law of the Sea and the Dispute Settlement Body of the World Trade Organization. In October 2012, Professor Crawford was nominated for election as a judge of the International Court of Justice with the support of the Australian government and elections are due to be held for that role at the United Nations in late 2014. Uh, on that note, it is, is my very great pleasure and privilege to introduce Professor Crawford who will deliver his keynote address.